Daily Bible Time. Good morning, it is Dominic Steele. Friday morning, the 23rd of August. Thanks for joining us. And uh, we are in John chapter 6. Hey, looking forward to seeing you for the Village Cultural Night tomorrow night. That's going to be great. And then church on Sunday. Uh, I'm speaking Romans chapter 16, and I'm pumped about that. Hope you can join us. Now, we're in John chapter 6, and the, the issue is, in John chapter 6, this challenge from Jesus that unless you're dependent on me, unless you're relying on me, unless you're eating my flesh, drinking my blood, you will not have eternal life. It was a hard saying. There was pushback. In fact, verse 60 of John 6, on hearing this, many of his disciples said, this is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? Um, they have in the synagogue a question time, a comment time, a pushback time, just like we do at Village Church. And um, and really, actually, you got to know, disciple, there are disciples and disciples. Disciple means followers, and sometimes the word disciples refers to the 12 disciples, and sometimes it's the broader group of those who are hanging around listening to Jesus. And, and this is the group, and some of that hanging around group are grumbling, verse 61, Aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, Jesus said to them, Does this offend you? What if you see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? Now, ascending in John's Gospel, um, in John chapter 3, Jesus is lifted up. There's a double meaning there. For in John, the way Jesus ascends to his Father's right hand is through ascending, being lifted up on the cross. And those two events are linked in John. He poses a question. What if you see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? What if you see the crucifixion and exaltation of the Son of Man? Raises the question, where am I as a follower, potential follower, in regards to the crucifixion of Jesus? Am I lifting up in exaltation Jesus right next to the Father? Is that where he is in my mind? Now, in John chapter 6, the answer to those questions is left open, left open deliberately, I think. But that's actually the challenge of John chapter 7, how each man and woman responds to this supreme scandal will shape where each of us spends eternity, eternal life, eternal death. Now, to conclude the chapter, John chapter 6, people walk away. John chapter 6, verse 63, from this time many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. Many of his disciples. Yes, there were 10,000 listening to him earlier in the chapter. Today, he ends with many less. In the ministry growth stats, it's a disaster. What would you do? I'd be tempted to call a staff meeting and say, well, what do we do wrong? What do we say that caused offence? Here's Jesus' analysis, sentence 63. The spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I've spoken to you are spirit and life. Um, if we are with the words of Jesus, if we are trusting the words of Jesus, they're coming with spirit and they're giving us life. Yet 64, there are some of you who do not believe. I take it the thousands who walked were not enabled by the Father. But those who remain have the spirit of God working in them. But many thousand over this 24 hours have walked for Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and who would betray him. He went on to say, this is why I told you no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled him. Whether or not the Father draws people, people are only able to come if the Father enables. As all those thousands walk away, Jesus turns to his key guys. You don't want to leave too, do you? And Jesus asked the twelve. Simon Peter asked him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We believe and know you are the Holy One of God. I want our church to grow, but it's useless to have a full building if people haven't got personal encounter with the living God. So most of all, I want our people to have a personal encounter with the words of eternal life, to know and believe that Jesus is the Holy One of God, and to have eternity, security of eternity, with Jesus, feeding on Jesus, enabled by Jesus. And Jesus replied, have I not chosen you, the twelve? And yet one of you is a devil. He meant Judas, son of Iscariot, who though one of the twelve was later to betray him. Heavenly Father, this day when many turn away from Jesus, we pray that you'd help us to hold our nerve and to keep preaching, depend on him, rely on him, trust him, 
for salvation, for eternal life. And we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks for joining us on Daily Bible Time today. See you tomorrow morning. God bless. Bye-bye.